This is Wandsworth. The BBC has been given unprecedented access inside a British jail. Over seven days, we saw the fear and violence. Yeah, there's one person under restraint there, the wing looks secure. You've got to be able to defend yourself, innit? If you can't defend yourself, then you'll become a victim, innit? The drugs feeding addiction inside. You can get spice, you can get heroin, you can get crack, you can get anything you like. Right anything now. from right now. Is it easy to get cannabis? It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. I want my property! Get down! The prison officers pushed to the very edge. I think I'm probably the most stressed I've been in 24 years in this, in this job. And the governor demanding change. Without reform, I don't know how long we could sustain the prison system. Our prisons are changing. The government is reforming six jails in England and Wales by handing back control over budgets and contracts to their governors. Wandsworth is one of them. We spent six months persuading the Ministry of Justice to allow us inside. This is what we found. Oh, Can you run? Can you run? B-Wing and Jennifer, a new recruit, and Steve, a Wandsworth veteran, face the first alarm of the day. Run! An inmate is refusing to go back to his cell. Neddy Lee. 20 years ago, he murdered a man in a fight. Get down! This is his 38th jail. He told us he was trapped in a cycle of violence. In the two decades I've been in, I've had warfare in jail. I've got sliced down the side of the face and I don't know cut me. It's, it. it's been non-stop, constant. Violence. I've, violence non-stop. I've been stabbed through the chest. I've had my arm broke. I've got three broken bones in my hand. I've had murders in here, left, right and centre. And I've, I've gone to them and said, look, at the end of the day, you're putting me in a predicament where I have no alternative but to utilise violence for my safety or to assert position on the wing. And that's totally counterproductive to my progression. I need to go home. I was just a baby. Psychologically, it's torture. Emotionally, it's, it's very, very difficult. And with the greatest respect, they're so short-staffed in here, this place can't run. It's unsafe. Even a lot of the staff that are in here are in fear. Going down two, going down two, going down two. And facing this pressure, Jennifer. This is her first job inside a prison. Four weeks in? Yeah, four weeks in. You're shaking. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the, like the, the rush. You know, something going to happen. Like, I've done so much. So it's the first time I've used my CNR, which is use of force. Oh. It all goes off here. Yeah. Job for you? Yeah, definitely. Like, it, it happens on a regular basis. We just have to get used to it. At times inside Wandsworth, it felt relentless. An overcrowded, understaffed Victorian jail. This alarm is because there's been a fight in the yard. So that looks like a chair leg that was thrown down there. At least one officer has been hurt. Are you all, are you all right? We're all leaving. To understand what happened, we asked to watch the CCTV footage. On the left, you can see one inmate attack another with the chair leg, breaking his arm. In seconds, the fight spreads. We're told this was planned. Two South London gangs fighting over respect. Every day I wake up and I think I've got God with me. So I don't Days know. later, we tracked down the man who started the fight. So it makes me much better. A rare opportunity to ask why. It happens every day. It's like violence. Violence just happens every day. It's, it's maybe from this postcode and that postcode and that. And so the gangs follow you in here? Yeah, the gang, the gang follow you. When you're a gang member, everywhere you go, you, you're, known to be a, you're just known to a gang member. And, that. and when you walked out on that yard? Mm. Um, um, yeah, when I walked out, uh, walked out in the exercise yard, I thought yeah, I had to fight. I had to fight because if I don't fight in that, I won't be. I won't be a man. 
So after after all of the end of all of that fine and that when I was going back in I think he has gone. At least I made it. But this is the cost, an inmate hurt and angry. Yeah, he's waving the stick around, wasn't he? Waving the stick around, waved it at my arm, broke my arm. You've got to do what you got to do. There's nothing you can do about it. You get your arm broke and you're left in your cell. Three days it took them to take me to the hospital. Three days. You're vulnerable in here with what a broken kind? arm. I have a lot of friends who are wrapped around me, so there's no problem for me, but another person could be very vulnerable. The threat of violence was everywhere. This prisoner had boiling water and sugar thrown over his face. Another had been beaten up. Just another fight, he said, all part of prison life. You've got to be able to defend yourself, innit? If you can't defend yourself, then you'll become a victim, innit? How many fights have you had in here? Oh, I, well, in this jail, I had about five, six. Five, six, to be honest with you. Yeah. The most violent inmates are sent here, the segregation unit. We're facing this. These, these can all come at you when you come through that door. And they're heavy. That's going to do some damage, isn't it? Yeah. But the whole landing, all these cells, see the fellow opposite you, all these cells have been flooded. The whole lot, there's another cell over there. I think we're there. Uh, 13, 14 bed unit, and we're only half working because the cells are just getting taken out. And this is what it takes just to feed some prisoners. Officers wearing helmets, delivering a sandwich. How dangerous is this job? It's getting dangerous. It's, it's getting worse. Every day we saw the pressure. Excuse me, sir. This is because another inmate is refusing to go back to his cell. Oh, here he is, there. Yeah. Come, come back through there. It's this way, this way, stop, stop. This Steve way. has worked here for 19 years. Yeah, it's one person under a strike there. The wing looks secure. The amounts of incidents have gone up. We're not actually proactively trying to solve issues. We just seem to be reacting. With four to five staff on the units and wings like that, it gets quite tense at times. There needs to be fundamental change because we release prisoners, they keep coming back. This was found in his uh, kit bag. And fueling the violence, the drugs. This is spice, a synthetic cannabis. It's got so bad, Wandsworth now has an X-ray machine to search inmates. That is um, drugs concealed. There's also sniffer dogs, but still the drugs are smuggled inside. So Prison officer Danielle showed us the evidence room. It's packed with drugs, weapons and phones. We have a very, very small mobile phone. It's tiny. Absolutely tiny. Those are obviously homemade nunchucks that could do a bit of damage there. We would strongly suspect that that is spice. What is spice doing to prisons? Hurting them, really. Not all prisoners are violent, everybody's in there for different reasons, but I think um, using spice can potentially make people extremely violent, and it's getting more and more common now. Wherever you work, there's always spice stories. In just 12 months, prison staff say £300,000 worth of drugs have been seized inside Wandsworth. I sleep here, my cellmate sleeps here, this is my TV. Ashley has just started his sentence. The canteen comes round every He time. says drugs are everywhere. I sit, hear my tunes at night time when I'm relaxing and that. Same old, yeah, this is it, this is my home, this is where I live. What drugs can you get in here? You can get spice, you can get heroin, you can get crack, you can get anything you like. Anything right now. from Right now, all I've got to do is go down to the twos, to the threes, to the ones, it's there, everything's there, anything you like. Is it easy to get cannabis? It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Is prison made your addiction worse? Um, yeah, because I've been in for so long now. I've been in for nearly eight years, so um, I get a lot stressed out. This is the drugs that's the problem. And being inside so long. How do you Being pay? around so much people that smoke the stuff. But the smell of cannabis is really, the smell of cannabis. 
In most days, we could smell cannabis. This was bee wing. Yeah, it's overwhelming, especially up here. And then we see it. A group smoking below us, in full view. It's mad, like, the spots are here and that as well, and just, no one cares, like, it's like there's no order, like. But how do you feel about people smoking cannabis down there? Not good. The imagine they can't get it next week now, then what, it's going to be fights and that. And the officers are just here, like. Is Obviously, it, it's not yeah. missing sport. Where can you get cannabis from around here? Everyone. Is it easy to get? Do you, do you want cannabis? I can get you some store. Can you get me cannabis yeah. right now? Yeah. How does that make you feel here in that? <laughs> well, obviously, it's not good, is it? And many inmates told us the same story. Drugs smuggled into Wandsworth, available for the right price. I know officers that charge you, say, £500 a parcel, the size of, say, three tennis balls, full of drugs, phone, whatever you want. This prisoner asked us not to show his face. He wanted to talk about corruption. A smart smartphone, you 700 quid to go for, retail price. And who brings those phones in? Oh, officers, other prisoners. Are you just saying that, though? Oh, of course I'm not to just saying that. To get in trouble? No, nah, no, nah, of course I'm not. If it is a member of staff who is quite willing to bring in a mobile phone or some drugs that could potentially put me on it and everybody else in danger, I don't want to work with them. How big is the problem? It's hard to tell. I think there's probably at least one corrupt person in every, in every jail. Inside Wandsworth, inmates and staff talked freely about corruption. The governor admitted there was a problem and that he had to deal with it. Corruption is the one thing that I absolutely cannot stand. And I think that's a very clear message from me that one of the first things we would do with reform is to think very carefully about how do we deal with those issues of corruption and what do we do to tackle those staff bringing that drugs in because that will deal with some of the issues that you've highlighted and that uh, you've seen over the last week. But the corruption, drugs and violence are just part of the story. In Wandsworth, we found a jail facing another crisis. And how are you in your mind? How are you? No good. Cut. This cut. Twice in Wandsworth, this man came to see us. He'd cut every inch of his body. Desperate, he speaks very little English. Are you getting mental health help? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I is crazy. I is crazy. No sleeping every day. Sleeping. I can't. Cut. 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 And so many here are in crisis. This man jumped over the railings onto the netting. Other inmates wanted us to meet him. They said he shouldn't be in a jail. Severe mental health Need, needs help. Who's this? They neglected Mowgli. Mowgli! Schizophrenic. Severely schizophrenic. Nuts. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm in jail! Where do you want to be right now? I want to be Springfield! I want to be Springfield in Parkinson! Where do you want to be and what do you want? I need that to help you. Why did they tell me when I've handed in the paper already? Why do they keep telling me? Why, why do they keep telling me I'm on basic uh, I'm mental health? In Wandsworth, officers are constantly assessing prisoners. This cell. Are you sure? Here, an inmate has smashed up his cell. He's in distress. Nathan has self-harmed. He says his mental health is getting worse. Uh, this is my artwork. Okay. This is Romeo, you can see. It goes down there. If you can see down there, there's a bottle of tequila, yes. There's also a very large gun, yeah? Can you see that? Yeah, nice belt. So Romeo, meat, and then love hearts, okay? And then if we go down here, we'll see Juliet. And if you look at the print of Juliet here, that is, that's art. I've got personality disorder. I'm also um, signed off from the doctor 
um, for severe anxiety and I only just received my medication yesterday. Being in prison with your needs, what does it do to you? Made myself up, basically. I had sort of no, no other option other, other than to say, let me, let me make a phone call, holding the razor blade to my arm like that, and then eventually the, the, the officer opened up the door. Are you asking for help from people? Yes, I am asking for help, but the service seems to be so slow. Not by the prisoner. For officers like Steve, the demand can be overwhelming. They say 85% of people that come into prison have mental health issues, be it personality disorders, or be it more like schizophrenia, schizophrenics, bipolars, etc. What's the pressure like? If you can't look after vulnerable people, all right, in a safe environment, all right, people will get hurt and people will die. Do you think lives could be saved if there were more members of staff? Definitely. Definitely. The amount of self-harm and self-inflicted deaths are on the increase. This inmate, a failed asylum seeker, talked about taking his life. He'd sewn his lips together and was on hunger strike. I think about this every day for killing myself. I uh, go Friday, start a dry, uh, dry hunger strike. I don't drink water, don't eat nothing. Because here is many stress. No, 23 hour close in cell. And dealing with suicide, officers like Andy. He says he can't forget the faces of prisoners who've taken their lives. It leaves a big impression because I can see, I can see probably eight of the guys that I've dealt with. You know, and I've dealt with more, but there's eight specific guys I can still see their faces. And some of those guys, you know, one of those guys was back in 90, 1994. You know that I happened to cut down. Um, another guy, you know, it, it, it was around about 96, I, and I can, I can still see him, I can still see the, the grimace on his face. But how to cope with all the violence, self-harm and addiction, when nearly half the inmates here are foreign, and many can't speak English? Are you from Rom Romania? 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 So many Romanians. I'm from Romania. But like I'm Richard also. and Antonio Silva. They say they've served their time, but are waiting to be deported. Three weeks ago, he Three weeks ago, he's finished my punishment. You know, let me go home. Do you want to go back to Romania? Yes, I want to go back. I don't want to come back here never. I'm from Romania, but it doesn't matter where you're from. Human rights are human rights. This is my cell. I don't even have hot water, as you can see here. No kettles. So but not everyone wants to go home. This, there is very worse in this prison. I don't Take Poldrak, unhappy with his cell, but proud of his crimes. What are you in for? Uh, Pipakatim. How much were you stealing a day? Uh, two or three thousand per day. Three thousand pounds yeah, yeah, per day yeah. out of people's pockets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how I am feeling proud of it. You're proud of yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to do it again. What, here in the UK? I might come here in UK as well. I don't know how, but I'm going to try and come here again. To pickpocket? Yeah, because here you make a lot of money. Why should British taxpayers be paying money to keep you here? But I don't know, there is no reason. If, if, because in any way they're going to send me to Romania. So why did why they want to hold me more? Now you have to say how long have you been. Some foreign prisoners take English lessons, but the majority don't. And with so many languages being spoken inside Wandsworth, the jail struggles to cope. It's usually difficult. 30 or 40 different nationalities, 30 or 40 different languages, and they provide a huge challenge because there is lots of argument and debate about how much we engage those people into work or into education and how much energy we put into people that ultimately might not be here uh, and be deported. It's clear there aren't enough prison officers to deal with the problems facing Wandsworth. Across England and Wales, the number of prison staff has fallen by more than 30% in the last six years. For new members of staff, these conditions are all they've ever known. Is it what you expected it to be? Yeah, well, what do you expect prison to be like? Prison, prison is prison. Did you expect this? Yeah, I, I, I expected daily arguments, daily fights. Um, I, pu got? I pulled out my baton for the first time yesterday. Um, I cut down my first hanging prisoner two weeks into the job. Um, you are going to be faced with a lot of realist things. You're going to be faced with shocks. Um, but it's a do you want to do this job? I 
I came into this job to be able to rehabilitate, rehabilitate certain prisoners. Can you do that? I think I can. We're told that most days, Wandsworth operates 50 officers short of what's needed, and recruitment is a struggle. It doesn't take much for the jail to grind to a halt. There's been an incident that shut down a wing. They're trying to get the inmate out of here now, away from the wing. And as this is happening, that whole wing with hundreds of inmates is being locked down. It means that some days, inmates are locked up for 23 hours with no rehabilitation. A lot of other jails, they get treated correctly. For some, it leads to resentment and frustration. They're out of their cell at least an hour a day. We don't get that. We're just here. We just get banged up. If all they say is, oh, lack of staff, lack of staff, we can't let you out. Now, it needs to change. Like, we're human beings as well. <laughs> This prison has been Andy Topping's life, but he says the job is harder now than ever before. You know, my wife worries that I'm not going to come home. If, if she could, she would have me out, the, you know, out the job. And it's because I care. I, I, you know, I want to make a difference. I believe my staff want to make a difference. You know, we're struggling. We haven't got the staff. No, leave it. Leave it. It's all right. It's all right. Leave it. We're all right. What's happening to your mental health? I don't think people care. I don't think people care about what's happening to my mental health. But what is happening to you your know, mental health? Um, I, think I'm, I think I'm probably the most stressed I've been in 24 years in this, in this job. What's going to happen to you? Um, if, it, if I'm like my colleagues, I'll retire and I'll die early. Andy desperately needs reform now. And many officers felt the same. Hospital. Let down and forgotten. Steve says he feels betrayed. Do you think you're appreciated? No, we're definitely not appreciated. You can tell that by the amount of cuts we've received. To actually have the strength to actually turn around and, and deliver care to the person that spits in your face and to continue with that, because at the end of the day, it's about the society as a whole. If we treat the most undeserving with care and respect, that says a lot about our society. The BBC was invited here to hear these stories from inmates who one day will be released and from a governor who believes that without reform, our jails will break. How big is this moment? It's massive. It's the once in a generation, if not more, opportunity to change, change the system and to do something which is really positive and, and to do something. It, without reform? We carry on running a system, as you've seen it over the last uh, week or so. Drugs coming in, violence. mobile phones, violence being perpetuated not having enough resources to be able to challenge some of that behaviour. Without it, we carry on doing the same old thing. We see the same faces coming through the system. We don't change people, and that's what we're about. That's what we want to do. The prison revolution is promised. But without enough staff to provide even the basics, how can jails rehabilitate and end the violence, addiction and self-harm? The lives lost behind bars.